WJLA.com. We'll continue to track his journey to recovery. Well, Seven is on your side tonight with a health alert about possible rabid raccoons in Arlington. Last week in the Donaldson Run neighborhood, a raccoon with rabies symptoms bit someone and is still on the loose. That was on 23rd Street North near Taylor Elementary School. Two other raccoons that also showed symptoms have been caught. If you or your pets come in contact with raccoons or bats, contact Arlington Animal Control. Mm. All right, turning now to the weather. It is cold, but no rain just yet. Hey, BK, step to the side, man. You're blocking the full moon. What's wrong with you? Look at that. Look I how know. beautiful <laughs> that is. Are you just doing that so you don't turn into a werewolf? What's happening there? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. Hey, 1028 tonight. That is when the full moon is official out there. It's beautiful. It's, how nice is this? This is our camera at Dulles. Looking out, of course, into the eastern sky. Gorgeous. In December, it's called the cold moon. Obviously, the last full moon of the year. And a beautiful night to get out and see it. It is chilly if you're making your way out. I mean, the numbers are into the 30s. 36 degrees in D.C. Chantilly got freezing right now in Gaithersburg. 35 Stafford already below freezing. In Martinsburg, you add a little wind to it. We're easily below freezing there with the wind chill. But it's 26 in Elkins. Notice 29 in Pittsburgh, 33 around Columbus, Ohio. Our temperatures here in our region, much, much colder than yesterday. That cold front we were telling you about last night has worked its way on through. So 10 to 20 degrees cooler in many spots compared to this time last night. And that's just going to set the stage for a very chilly night tonight. It is dry. It is clear. Our next weather maker well off to the west. But I want to show you tomorrow morning, another cold one. We're going to get going with wind chill factors into the 20s, maybe even some teens out there in spots. But it is another dry day as we run you through the future cast. 8 o'clock in the morning. Let me stop this here at, say, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Notice you get some breaks in the clouds. I do not anticipate a straight overcast day. But I do expect more clouds than sunshine and certainly more cloud cover than we had out there today. And that is because they're out ahead of our next weather maker that will be here tomorrow night and into Thursday. But notice as I advance you, say, roughly 24 hours from now, it's still dry. You're not seeing the green on the map. That would be rain. But late tomorrow night, pause this at midnight into your Thursday morning, now we're starting to see the green. And it is likely in the form of rain, even in our western spots, as just slightly warmer air is going to make its way on in. Not warm air, but warmer. So notice by tomorrow, we're going to start out below freezing, end up in the mid-40s, and then some of that warmer air works on in. And so we'll look at Thursday, the last day of 2020. We're going to start out well above freezing, and we're going to go to about 49 degrees or so into the afternoon. And that is the change. That is the update from Stormwatch 7 compared to when we met this time last night. What we've done is we've looked at all the models. We've taken down the high temperature for Thursday, Friday. We see the warm air working on in, and it does look like rain showers Thursday into your New Year's Eve, maybe dry around the midnight time frame, but areas of rain Friday. But that warmer air slow to lift, and when it does, We've actually increased Saturday's temperature to 62 before falling those temperatures back down into the 40s Sunday. So plan on some showers Thursday, some heavy rain on Friday at times. Scott. And now the Toyota Sports Desk brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. New tonight, D.C. United making some league history. Just a short time ago, I had a really good conversation with the club's new team president, Danita Johnson. The 37-year-old becomes the first black team president in Major League Soccer history. Her resume, impressive. For the past two years, Johnson was the president of the WNBA's L.A. Sparks. She also worked for the Mystics back in 2013 and 2014. Johnson understands that with this position, she will inspire others to follow in her own footsteps. What does that mean to you, Danita? It's such an honor. Um, I'm very excited to take this on. Um, and I know that me doing this opens the door of possibility for others and the importance of doing the job really well. So just the act of moving into the role, I feel like it's inspirational, but I also feel the responsibility to make sure I do the job really well. Yeah, well said there. You can watch my entire interview with Danita Johnson, including why she loves traveling the world and the one place that is at the very top of her bucket list. It's on our website right now, wjla.com slash sports. Now, it's important to clarify that Johnson will strictly be focusing on